So one of the rites of passage of a maker is to create your own maker coin. And these are really just for bragging rights. They're typically 3D printed parts. They look a little bit like this. And at the end of the day, they're, they're plastic. So when I wanted to make a maker coin, I didn't really want to do the standard 3D print. What I wanted to do is make something more like this. And this is my maker coin. It's made of brass. It's two-sided. It's got uh, my Canadian maple leaf on the back. And you can make your own and I'll show you how. So let's get going. How's it going everybody? Steve here. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, as I mentioned in a video I did on the Onefinity CNC router, I want to do a bit more mixed manufacturing sorts of projects and uh, you'll see me kind of flip between CNC, maybe some 3D printing, certainly lasers. We've done lots of laser work and this time I wanted to, to create my own maker coin. And the reason is because I've had a couple of people come to me and say, hey, I need a, a, some special memento, an award, uh, or I'm making something for, for a kind of an exclusive club. Can you make a coin? And the answer, of course, is yes, we can, we can make it. It's how much you're willing to pay. Now, normally you wouldn't do it this way, but uh, you would instead create a die using your CNC machine and then take it to a machine shop and get them to use the die to punch out a bunch of coins. But in this particular case, I actually wanted the coin to look like it was made with something in my shop as opposed to just pressed out in a commercial shop. So that was the inspiration. So what I'll do in this video is walk you through how I design my, my kind of workflow because it isn't uh, all that trivial. Uh, this is, project is what you could certainly call an advanced project where I do a little bit of work in Fusion 360, then move it over to uh, Vectric uh, VCarve desktop, and then ultimately carve it out on my router. And I'll show you the whole step process here. So uh, with that, let's get started with the design. So I hopped into Fusion 360, which is where I designed the coin. And there's reasons for that. The coin itself is two concentric circles and then a bunch of smaller circles around the outside. And I used, took advantage of 3D uh, a Fusion 360's uh, pattern tool to create one circle and then wrap it around the entire perimeter of the coin. Then I took some text and I wrapped that around a construction line, a circle that was a construction line, and then I dropped my logo in the center and uh, then got to the extrusion piece and ex started extruding things out. Now my text here is extruded outward with a 1 32nd inch ball bit, which is what I'm gonna use. It's a little hard to get the kind of detail I want here, but it works. And honestly, if you look at any coin, the, any text that's on it is raised. It's not engraved. If you took a V-bit and engraved this, you'd get a much better result. But I wanted to do uh, a more traditional coin. So the results are okay. I should actually get a uh, like a 15 degree V-bit. Uh, I didn't have one, which is why I kind of settled with, with, the ball, with the ball bit. Uh, anyway, this is the 360 this Fusion 360 design. Note, it's only the first two millimeters of the material. The entire coin is six millimeters thick, but you don't have to model the center. Uh, I did something similar for the back, except I took all the text and my logo out, and it's really just the circles with the, with the dimples around the outside. And what that allows me to do later is import that surface into VCarve desktop and then drop a 3D image on top of it. You could do it in Fusion 360, but Fusion doesn't really handle mesh very well if it's got uh, a million data points, for example. So I just created the plane surface here and then exported the whole thing. And the way I did that was for this side, I just go in and I can save it as a mesh and then I can load that mesh into VCarve. And I had two separate files, one for the for the front of the coin and one for the back of the coin. And you'll see when we cut it out, I actually stop in the middle and flip the coin over and, and realign everything and, and do the other side. So one of the things you can do in Fusion 360 is you can actually create the tool paths here. You can go to the, the manufacturing view and create tool paths. Uh, again, because my uh, the back side of my coin has a will have an image uh, from VCarve in it, uh, I can't really do that here. And for what it's worth, I find the toolpath creation in Fusion 360 is a bit cumbersome. And in in VCarve, uh, it's just so much better at creating that stuff. So, uh, and I'll show you what I did there. So let's hop over to VCarve. All right, so I've loaded my image into VCarve. And to do that, I just did a file import 
and a 3D model and I, I loaded the mesh that I exported out of Fusion 360. Now I have two tool paths set up here. One is a roughing cut where I have a quarter inch end mill selected and if I show you the, uh, the speeds and feeds here, uh, I have a 30% overlap uh, a step over and the depth is 0.025 inches. I've got things running pretty slowly here as I'm doing the engrave because we are machining a piece of metal so it's a little bit uh, heavier than wood. Uh, the machine allowance is 0.2 millimeters. This is as close as it's going to come to any finished surface with the roughing pass and I have uh, my ramp plunge turned on set to about 15 millimeters. Uh, on the second tool path, which is the finished tool path, I have a 1 32nd inch ball picked and again uh, it's a three flute. Uh, the step over is only 7% so there's lots of overlap here to make sure that the surface is nice and smooth. And I can go a little faster here because I'm only machining out 0.2 millimeters for the most part. Uh, I can go pretty quick because we're not actually removing that much material. And if I calculate those, then I can go to, uh, to my preview and I can say, show me all the, all the tool paths. You can see there's the roughing tool path, cutting out the, the high level and then the finished tool path cuts out the final, the final shape. So that's V-Carve. Uh, the only thing left to do here is select the tool paths and save them. And, and I save them typically as separate files. So I can load those files directly into my Onefinity, start the carve and uh, things will be good. Now to make things simpler, I, I took a couple of pieces of quarter inch plywood and I made a jig to allow setting and resetting of the coin uh, very quickly because you do have to take it out and, and flip it over and get it aligned perfectly again. And that's a bit tedious. So what I did was I did a cutout. That's the diameter of the coin, which is 47 millimeters. And in that cutout, I also cut a two millimeter hole and I save that cutout. So when I put the coin in there, I can just put the cutout back in uh, on top of it and then align using a ball, a ball bit, uh, realign to the, to the disc that I cut out on and laid on top. And you'll see me do that in, in the video here and uh, then re-zero the, the router positioning and that gets me perfectly set for the second side. So it, it, it's a pretty simple uh, way to kind of hack your way through this. So let's get uh, going on the cuts.
So there you go, you saw the coin coming off the machine. It looks really nice. I'll do a close up here of both sides. You can see I have my logo on one side and flip it over and I have a, a nice maple leaf on the other side to support my, my, my heritage. Now this is a kind of a testimony to how good the Onefinity machine is. Uh, a router really isn't known for its accuracy and even with a router in the machine rather than a spindle, uh, the Onefinity machine did a fantastic job on this, so kudos to them. Now, I did a review of the Onefinity just recently, what I liked and disliked. Uh, you can see the video up in the corner here. If you're interested, go watch that, and I'll see you over there. Uh, otherwise, you can make your own MakerCoin now, but go make your world, and I'll see you next time.